Hey guys, Blake and Jeff here. He's Blake. I'm Jeff, and we are back with another bonus video. B -b -b bonus. There it is. This is additional content other than our main content. Therefore, it's a bonus. Um, these premiere first on our Patreon, mm -hmm. patreoncom slash Blake and Jeff. Link in the description below. Um, before they hit YouTube, approximately one week before they hit YouTube. Um, so Proxima Centauri. Exactly. Um, if you're seeing this on YouTube, head on over to the Patreon. There might be some other stuff there available for you now if you'd like to sign up. Uh, we have a different tier on there for a couple different things. You can get some early stuff and you get the bonus content and stuff like that. So, um, but here on YouTube, if you could do a couple things for us, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, yeah. make sure you like the video helps it get out to other people um, leave comments especially yeah. on videos like this um, a lot of our bonus videos are very specific like this is something you like or don't like or you know things like that and we like to get opinions because these are almost always our opinions and we like to hear what you guys have mm -hmm. so um, this one is a three by three of TV shows whoa um, so we're gonna go through our personals and you let us know your favorites. Yeah. And by three by three, if, if you need us to explain it, it's your top nine. Yeah. Some you people know, they get confused. Grid format so that nothing is more important than the other. Yeah. We don't, we're not putting them in it's order. It's just a visual aid to make right. it easy to visualize. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Uh, okay. Are we ready to start? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, before we start here, we will say this, okay? What? We are movie people. Mm hmm I have joined you to become an anime person. Mm hmm We are video game people. Mm hmm And we are TV people, though some of us had much more of a head start. Our TV stuff is going to... Very drastically, I feel. Yeah, there's only one overlap, and we both know what it probably is. Oh, really? Yeah. There were potential for other overlaps. Oh, I know what it is. You know what it is. Okay. Come on. It took me a second. I was like, I had to think about my list. And I was yeah. Like, oh, I know um, yeah, so our lists are definitely varied. Yeah, and we'll explain how we each came to our lists when, yeah. we, when we share our lists. For sure. But, yeah. All right. But I will go first. Yes, you will. So... Are we ready for my list? Where is it? There we go. Let's. There's your list. <laughs> well, don't show it. Go to the next one. I'm not. I'm, this doesn't go on there. I just put our thing on there when I say, oh, okay. here's my list. All right. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So, um, I would say you can see by this, I have a type. Yeah. Um, but within that type, different kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to start at the upper left. I'm going to go with Arrested Development. Arrested Development, yes, even the Netflix years. I almost had this on my list. Are still top tier comedy. One of the greatest sitcoms ever created. Um... One of the greatest casts ever assembled that have all gone on to do amazing stuff afterwards. Like, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love it. I have... Okay, so again, like you said, we'll talk about how we determined how we were going to do our lists. We don't really talk about it beforehand unless there's a specific reason to. But my list, there are... I have watched a lot of TV in my life. Most of it, forgettable. Mm -hmm. Okay. The things that stick in my mind are obviously also going to be the things that I watch over and over again. These shows are the shows that I have probably watched of my own volition over and over and over again the most. Um, so... In some sense, I would probably say that they are my favorite shows. 
And then I would also probably say that that means the majority of these would probably comprise my list of the greatest TV shows. Because if it's something that I consider great, I probably would watch it again. So, Arrested Development, I came too late. I didn't watch it when it was on. Same. Actually, I watched the final season before Netflix. Yeah. The final season before. Um before it left. So basically I caught up. Um, I had never really seen a show like it. I've really never seen a show like it since it's very unique. The single camera aspect of it was at the time still fairly new. Like office was playing with it, but most of them were still studio shot three cameras um, everything on a set. Um, I also just the the quality of the jokes in that show yeah. is probably one of the highest of all time for me. The number of references. There's still like the the one, and I don't know why, because it's like it's funny, but it's not like the funniest thing in the show. Yeah. But the one line that like I remember to this day, and I and I will quote it sometimes, is uh, is um, Will Arnett when he said uh, Will Arnett, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that sounded weird to me on my mouth. I was Joe like, Bluth. When he said, um, he's like, it's an illusion, not a trick. A trick is something a whore does for money. <laughs> that is the best. That's in the that's in the fucking first episode. Is it? <laughs> yes. I remember that so clearly. It's so good. And, just and like... he's saying it at a children like in front of a child. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> the callbacks, like the, just the the writing on that show is so spectacular. Yeah. That again, I've watched it over and over again. His his little girlfriend that they like they just keep forgetting who she is. Egg. Is that her name? No, Anne is her name, but they call her Egg because they can't remember her name. <laughs> and because she sort of looks like an egg. I just remember him. I just remember um, uh, Michael Sarah's character, like, you know, keep calling her Anne. And, and he's like, he's like, Anne, who, who's Anne? And he's like, Anne. Yeah. And like, they just keep forgetting. Everyone keeps forgetting. It's funny. That's May, was that Mae Whitman? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of the first things I ever saw her in. I remember her from uh, Friends. In the oh, the little the bluebird yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She wants yeah, to go yeah. to space camp. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just really good. I mean, it was also like for me, I grew up with <clears throat> with Jason Bateman on TV. He was on The Hogan's. Um, he was in Teen Wolf 2. Like he had had his day and then he just disappeared. Hmm. And he was gone for like, a decade didn't really make anything. This was his like comeback and what a comeback. Like his career skyrocketed and it is what it is today, which is basically an A list guy. Yeah. Um, and then just uh, it's one of the best supporting cast of all time. It's so good. I just, I can't say enough good things about it. It's, it's one of the great modern comedies. Um, and I love it. Yeah, and it's it's a great like uh, eclectic like character, you know, like kind of like the, the they attempted to do sort of a similar thing with like Modern Family. Yeah, and like they've done it with other shows, but it's just like these characters are so like unique and and wild. They are for sure. I mean, you have Buster with his claw and shit, like in later seasons. And so good. The fact that Job is a is a magician is funny. It's just like. Um, what's his, I mean, even, um, uh, what's his face? Um, uh, David, uh, David Cross. Cross. Yes. Yeah. Like even all, all his stuff, the anal rapist. A now oh, rapist. Oh. That's a now rapist, please. <laughs> it's so good. And the never nude stuff and wanting to be in the blue man group and, uh. so good. <laughs> but then being married to her and she's like, yeah. so, like so hot. And I know. Uh, uh. It's just so good. If you've never seen it, obviously, highly recommend it. I could not recommend it more highly as a comedy. Mr. It, F. Oh, Mr. F. Yes. Mr. F. So good. Everything. I mean, again, the Netflix seasons, spottier. 
but still full of some good stuff. Yeah. There's still some good work in there. The mother is just like a perfect character as well. Oh, she's so good. Uh, what's her name? The the character's name. Lucille Bluth. Lucille. Because then there's the Lucille other Lucille. Too. Yeah. Who has vertigo. Yes. <laughs> it's, like, it's so funny. I don't know why it's funny. So, so Arrested Development is interesting for me. The the main um, the main like uh, broadcast series had mm-hmm. already like aired. Yeah, when by the time I saw it, it was, the DVD box sets were like already out, and we had gone to California and stayed at my my parents have like a she's like their great my mom's like great great aunt or some shit. Okay, and she has like a beach house in um uh what should we call it. Uh, on, uh, in Balboa, like okay. where, where yeah, 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 you know, yeah. this is. And um, so we stayed there for like, uh, you know, we went out there and ex-girlfriend took her out there. So we're like, oh, we'll hit up like Disneyland. We'll stay at this like beach house and everything. It'll be like really cool. And while we're at the beach house, she had Arrested Development on DVD, like the, all the little box sets. And we were like, well, and then, uh, so the TV wasn't working. Like the cable wasn't uh, working. Okay. And this is, you know, before streaming services right, and all right. that shit. So we're like, well, let's just pop these in and check out what this is. And that's how we started watching it. And we're like, what the fuck is this? And it was like, it, you know, it was like so funny. And we had recognized like, you know, because we had seen like Jason Bateman and other stuff since then. Because like, yeah, he had been in other movies and, and so did some of the other characters. And like mm-hmm. we, we knew uh, David Cross from like Scary Movie 2. And like, you know, just the stupid shit that like Matt sure. and I had like watched and my, and my parents. But yeah, that's how we, we got into it. And yeah. Yeah, I I initially caught it in like reruns, and so I only got I I only originally saw it in like two episodes at a time. Hmm. Um, but I caught it at the beginning, so I watched like a few days worth, where so I got like six episodes in, and I was like, oh, this is so good, I, and so I went and like got the DVDs. So that I could go ahead and watch it. Um, yeah, I think it was just we, so good. Yeah, when we got home, I bought I bought the DVDs. Yeah, and that was back when I had my huge wall of mm-hmm. DVDs. I had everything, then I fucking sold everything. Yeah, me too. I got rid of all mine. Yeah, and I kind of wish I had like kept it all. Well, yeah. but it also takes a bunch of space. It takes a lot of space up. But some of these shows are hard to find now. True, that is true. I mean, not really the ones on my list because yeah. they, they've remained popular, but. And like I mean, all of these, all are of these, I think you can probably find. find. Yeah, yeah, they're probably pretty easy to find. Uh, okay, so that's Arrested Development. Obviously, like if you look at it, I've got three comedies, I've got a dramedy, and then I've got just dramas. Um, what's the dramedy? Freaks, Freaks and, and geeks. geeks. We'll talk about that. I'll talk about that now. Freaks and Geeks was a one season show. Yeah. Um. From Paul Fig and Judd Apatow, uh, with a cast that has gone on to be very huge. Um, but at the time, they were all pretty much unknowns. Um, a lot of them had come from Canada to come work out, and, you, know, you know. But they've all grown into pillars of the Hollywood community at this point. Um, it's a fantastic show. This was, so we talked about it last night, and I said I had eight of them cemented almost immediately and one slot that I rotated between a bunch of stuff. This is that slot. Because Freaks and Geeks, Band of Brothers, Friends, (laughs) um, I have Breaking Bad. I also had Better Call Saul as a potential. That was that was it was surprising for me to see Breaking Bad on here without Better Call Saul because I was like I thought you would have put Better Call Saul instead of Breaking Bad. No, Breaking Bad is the better show. See, I thought you said the other. I thought you said the other way. Better Call Saul is fantastic. Breaking Bad is the better show. I've heard people say Better Call Saul is better. It's not better to me. Okay, I like Breaking Bad better, and evidenced by the fact that I've seen Breaking Bad. At least, like full, probably eight times. Jesus, I watched Better Call Saul as it aired. I've never watched any of the things ever again. And it's not because it's bad, 
I just don't feel like I need to rewatch that. Whereas this is a pleasure to rewatch. I just enjoy it that much. But we'll get to Breaking Bad. Freaks and Geeks. I decided to go with Freaks and Geeks. It was the one I originally put in the slot because it is a show that I had this on DVD and I would rewatch it every year in its entirety, which is not hard because it's only one season. Um, but it's such a good like coming of age high school thing set in the like late 70s, early 80s, I think. Um, it has a stellar cast of, of young actors that obviously we know how, where they went, but to see them all start here and work so well together um, and the writing is just so sharp and I, I understand because, you know, just like with, uh, Linklater dazed and confused and like anybody who's writing about their own childhood and really being able to capture what it felt like, that's what Paul and Judd do here. And it's, it's just so well done. Um, I just love it. I love it so much. It's it's a tough one to recommend because of all of these, it is the probably the hardest to find. Yeah. I'm trying to remember if it's on a streaming service right now. I know it was at one I, point, but it might not be anymore. I think it is. It might be on something. And I think it's on one of the weirdest ones where is you'd it? be like, I, I would not have guessed that. Hmm. But let me see. I always go to my little Just Watch. Just Watch, yeah. Let's see if it's available. Freaks. Really? There we go. Hulu. Yeah, it is on Hulu. Okay, cool. Hulu and Paramount Plus. Aha. Uh-huh. Which I think that's where I saw it because I was uh, I I recently got Paramount Plus. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Still, still, I mean, it, it, it's one of those lesser known, even for people who like you know yeah. Seth Rogen and. Um, James Franco, you know, you know, yeah. 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 It is. It, it's one that's like, it's kind of been forgotten at this point. Um, but it's really good and it pairs really well with Judd Apatow's next one that had a lot of the re- same people involved undeclared, which was really, really well done. And it was basically like take freaks and geeks now move them to college. Hmm. Uh, but it was modern college. It wasn't college back in the eighties. Um, Again, another cast of people like Charlie Hunnam was on that show oh, weird. before he was anything. Yeah. Uh, it's, it was another good show. Pairs very well. Before he was in uh, Sons of Anarchy? or what? Yeah. Wasn't he also, is he Avatar? No, uh, he's not Avatar. No. Who's Avatar? Sam Worthington. Worthington. I always get yeah. Worthington and Hunnam confused. No. I mean, they are both Australian, so. Yeah. I guess I mean, no, he's not Australian, is he? Wait. Yeah, Charlie Hunnam's Australian. What's Sam Worthington? They're both Australian. Oh, yeah, well, they yeah. are. I, I was. It was just because he's done like so much like British stuff that I was mm. like, is he British? But he's not. He's Australian. <clears throat> Hunnam was. Uh, was he in the King Arthur? Yes. And then Worthington was Terminator. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, so freaks and geeks. Highly recommended. Um, There's another one that I almost put on here, but the only reason I didn't was because I haven't rewatched it nearly as often. I've seen it a couple of times. Mm -hmm. My So-Called Life. Mm. My So-Called Life. Is that the one with David Spade? and No. What am I thinking of? What's the old David Spade show? Just Shoot Me. Just Shoot Me. Never mind. (laughs) My My So-Called Life is Claire Danes. And um, Jared Leto, back when he was like a nineteen-year-old. Oh, weird. Um, it's it's similar in terms of like it's high school, but this one is more of a comedy with dramatic parts. That one is more straight drama or hmm. melodrama almost. Uh, but it, that one was so good as well. But that one, they both it was the similar like path. They were both like high school. They couldn't really find an audience. They kept moving the time slot so nobody could ever find it. It ended up on like like Freaks and Geeks. I know like ended up on like Friday nights 
And I was like, no kid is at home yeah. on Friday night watching this. That's a death sentence. It's a death sentence. Um, and my so-called life, and I think, if I remember correctly, I don't know that it got, like, truncated the first season. I think they were just told at the end we're not bringing it back. So they just changed, like, the very ending to make it more open-ended. Hmm. Um, my so-called life just got like canceled. So it didn't even have an ending, which was kind of a bummer, but, um, it's really, really good. There's some really good, like, it just takes me back to being in high school and makes me like feel it. And, and that's, what's so good about it because it's a generation before mine and the, the problems and stuff like that are still the same. Mm -hmm. It's so relatable because of that. Uh, again, highly recommend it. If you have Hulu or Paramount Plus or any torrent site, I highly recommend you get it, watch it. Again, it's one season, but it's well done. The soundtrack is also fantastic. There's a sequence in it um, with uh, Jason Siegel, like singing. And he does such a good job, which we, of course, later would see. He with does a lot of musical stuff, so it <laughs> makes sense. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I still love his the song in Himium, the slap song. And we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, West Wing. You, go you back. want me to talk about West Wing? Okay. The West Wing. Uh, this was the show. This is the only show. The West Wing is the only show that I've on your list here that I've never seen. Like anything anything of it, of it? Really? i've never seen a clip of it an yeah. episode nothing i mean it makes sense like it ran from like 2000 and politics which i have no interest in watching 2000 to like 2007 or 8 yeah so yeah it's not really like around, oh it's, yeah, it's right in that age it's right in that age where, where i'm like would i be like i would fuck. want nothing to do with this show yeah but it is one of the best written shows not just like political shows not it's one of the best written dramas of all time the the relationship with the characters, the banter. I mean, it's Aaron Sorkin. Dude, everybody who watches this show, like everybody I've ever heard talk about the show is like, it's amazing. It is. It's always like in their top fucking thing. It's so whatever. good. It invented the like. The walk and the talk. Walk, yeah, walk and talk Hell down yeah, the hallway baby. kind of shit. Hell yeah. Actually, see, that's what's funny about it. It didn't invent it. It popularized it. It popularized it. But... On Aaron Sorkin's previous show, Sports Night, he did invent it. <laughs> um, but yes, he perfected it on the West Wing and even got to the point where they would comment on it in the show. There's, like the there's just why are, we, why are we walking and talking? Dude, it's so good. Um, he weaves together, yes, there is a political agenda to the show. Aaron Sorkin is a staunch liberal Democrat. He's in Hollywood, yeah. Of course. Um, and so, yes, it, it is It is definitely the pie-in-the-sky version of what he would want to see in government. Originally, it was not going to focus on Martin Sheen as the president. He was going to pop in every once in a while, but it was about his staff. So Rob Lowe... Uh, like they were all going to be the focus. Um, he was number one, so good as the president and number two. So the audience wanted more of him that they, he became not the focus. It was still an ensemble, but he became such a big part of it that the rest of them got diminished a little bit. And Rob Lowe eventually left because he wanted to be the lead. And he wasn't the lead. That's not Allison Janney, is it? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. That's the first place I ever saw her, really. Yeah. I think I saw her in a movie at one point before that, but I don't remember her. But yes, that is Allison Janney. Um, there's Richard Schiff. There's, you know, all sorts of people on that show. Dulé Hill was on there. Um, Elizabeth Moss. Hmm. She played one of the president's daughters, Zoe. Um Fantastic. Some of the, I, again, I can't, I can't stress it enough. Um, this is one of those shows and we'll talk about it also with the Simpsons. This is one of those shows where I consider a certain portion of the show to be like the height of what that genre can be. 
the first four seasons of The West Wing are, as much as I say The Wire is the greatest show ever written, the first four seasons of The West Wing are the greatest drama ever written for me. After season four, Aaron Sorkin left the show. The quality dips a little bit, picks back up in seasons six and seven. And they get running again. Um, because here's the beauty of it as well. If you are a neophyte who doesn't know a ton about the political system, doesn't really know how Hollywood work or how Washington works, this is the show to basically walk you through everything. It walks you through things like how they get bills passed, how they, I mean, anything you can think of. It goes through the election cycle three times on this show so that you can see it from a different perspective every time. And they do such a good job of doing it. Um, the, the cast, the core cast doesn't really change that much. Um, again, Rob Lowe left at one point and they bring in some new people here and there. But the supporting cast that they bring in sometimes for an episode or two, sometimes for a season or two is so good. Matthew Perry was on this show for like four se- for like four episodes. Uh, and he was great. He was so good. The relationship he formed with uh, with them, with Aaron Sorkin on that, led to him starring in Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, which didn't do too well and was canceled after one season. But that was an interesting show as well. Um, I love it. It's, again, it, it's the ideal of what you want your government to be because they are engaged they want to do the right thing, but sometimes they don't, and they do the wrong thing, and they face the consequences for what they chose to do. <laughs> and that's the fantasy that's part the of fantasy. this, yeah, yeah. is that nobody fucking faces consequences anymore. Yeah. Um, but it's so good. Uh, it, I mean, it won Emmys many times. Like, again, if you like drama, but you hate politics, I get it. But I'm telling you, just give it a try. You will like the characters so much that the politics will not matter. You will just like to spend time seeing what these people are doing. And then it's the traditional Sorkin thing of everybody is always the smartest person in the room (laughs) Um, until they're not. And that's where it's fun sometimes. Sometimes he does bring them down a peg to make them realize they don't know everything and it's humbling for them, but it's good. And I love that show to death. Um, it, it is one again, like most of these, I rewatched the entire thing, seven seasons every year. That's how good it is, Whew. but it flies by. Are they 30 minute episodes or they hour? Are hour long baby? Whew. Hour long. And that's back in the days where it was like 24 episodes a season. Yep. Fuck. It's a lot of episodes, but it's, it's, it's so good. All right. The Simpsons. Everybody knows The Simpsons. Everybody knows The Simpsons. Everybody understands The Simpsons. Everybody has at some point in their life watched The Simpsons. Yep. Um, everybody has an era of The Simpsons that is their era. It's like Saturday Night Live. Everybody has their era. I was there from the beginning. See, it's it's tough, though, because my era would not be the beginning of The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it is because I, I got all the reruns. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I know the first, like, like when people were like, first eight. I'm like, yeah, The Simpsons. I know what you're talking about. Like, yeah. The, the first eight seasons are the only good seasons, and then it's, you know, which apparently has changed. People are like, no, they're actually the new People stuff. People say actually the new good. stuff is good. I'm, I, at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm so not going behind. back to the well. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to stick with my, I'll even give it the first eight and a half to almost nine seasons are the pinnacle of comedy writing. And definitely the pinnacle of animation writing to me. Uh, there's been some great stuff since. And, and there are people that are reaching the heights. So far, no one has done it as consistently mm-hmm. as they did for eight, almost nine seasons. 
Um, and again, it got better every season. And then they hit that point where they were so popular and so successful that everybody that made it that way left to go do their own thing because everybody wants their own voice. I get it. Mm -hmm. And then yes, the quality dips. You have to get new people in. Sometimes you don't gel quite as well. The, a lot of people left to go start Futurama, which almost made this list in that Freaks and Geeks spot because I've watched Futurama so many times. I almost had it on my list. It's almost there, but I had to give it to The Simpsons because that's where it all started. Um, and I know a lot of you, a lot of the people that watch these are younger. Mm. Um, and I, I don't think I can adequately explain to you how big a phenomenon The Simpsons was when it came out, when it first came on, on the Tracy Ullman show, I watched it on the Tracy Ullman show. Yeah. Um, and Ooh, then when it, that original Homer, the original Homer, dude, Bart, get in here. Yes. <laughs> so I, I watched it from the very beginning. It, it was appointment television, you know, back when you had to have appointment television, you had to go watch it when it was on or you never got to see it. Um, every Sunday night, yeah. Simpsons. Later years, preempted sometimes because of football. <laughs> yeah. On Fox. But hey, that's the way it goes. Um, the, it's just a. I mean, I, I remember the. I mean, The Simpsons was a big deal even for when, when I was young. Um, and then, like, my. Well, my best friend at the time was obsessed with The Simpsons. He had all The Simpsons video games, he had Simpsons, like. I spy books and <laughs> like encyclopedias that would like break down the the world of like Springfield and and all the different characters like yeah. all of your supporting characters and and like their entire histories and shit. You'd learn things about like Krusty the Clown that like are not in like anywhere, but they're like they have this like full blown like history of, of like his entire life. Parts of it are from like a Krusty the Clown video game on Super Nintendo. Mm -hmm. Parts are from like you know just wild shit. But uh, he was obsessed with The Simpsons. He had, like, everything. Yeah. So, like, it was always, like, there in my mind. Like, it was always, like, a part of my, yeah. like, thing. And I watched a lot of it. But then, like, there came a point where, like, I moved on from The Simpsons to, like, South Park. Sure. And, like, more, like, more of the raunchy shit. And was, like, you know, and at that age, I was, like, oh, this is, like, better. Because it's... Sure, sure. They say fuck and stuff. Of course. <laughs> but... I still remember the Treehouse of Horror stuff, and I'm just like, man, some those those Halloween episodes are so good. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're so good. Uh, ah, yeah. the other other shows have like tried to ape that like that kind of thing. That little, yeah, you know the the yeah, it just doesn't. They don't quite nail it. No. They try to be like, oh, let's make you know, Family Guy had a thing where they're like, let's try to make like Star Wars. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll do the we'll do that in, in like our yeah. thing, whatever. And it's just like, yeah, but don't. No. You don't have to. Nah. <laughs> Just be family guy. It will never be matched, but that's why it'll live on forever. Yeah. You know? It's just a good show, and I mean... I'm just thinking about how many fucking you, video you don't, games are You don't need to Simpsons. tell me to watch The Simpsons. Yeah. So, there you go. Um, The Wire. Yeah. The Wire is the greatest show ever made. Yeah, I knew this and Sopranos would be on your list. The Wire is the greatest show ever made. Even, yes, even the fifth season, which some people don't like. But there is some great stuff with McNulty in season five. The way that they make each season feel a little different, because the focus of each season is different, right? So in the first season, you have the focus on the street level drug dealers in Baltimore and the cops trying to catch them. And they're trying to catch them by getting them on a, a wire. They're trying to tap a phone and get them saying shit. Okay. The way that it tells both sides of that story is so compelling that you end up caring about everyone involved in some way. Some of them you don't like, but you are invested in what happens to them. And sometimes there will not be a payoff to that character for four seasons. 
But when it comes, it comes with a vengeance. And it feels right. There is not a single misstep to me in that show. The way that they change, <clears throat> this was also kind of a daring thing. The Wire went from following this group of characters in season one to following a completely different group of characters in season two, telling you a different side of this entire drug operation. But you don't know that until like halfway through the season. Hmm. And then they connect, and then you start seeing some familiar faces. And then in season three, they go back and tell you the street level people. But it's now the landscape has changed. And so it's about how the turf has changed and who's new to the thing. And then because it's David Simon, who was a beat reporter in Baltimore in the 70s and 80s. So he was there on the ground, like seeing all of this shit happen. He talked to all the people involved. He knows all the stories. He went and decided for season four, fuck all that. We're going to talk about the school system in Baltimore. <laughs> and we're going to follow these middle school kids. And we're going to follow them and figure out, you know, what do they want? What is the world that they see in front of them? And how are they going to try and navigate it? And then again, it still ties in to everything. You start to see other people show up from a season ago in a different scenario, but it makes sense. And it all just works so well. And it's most of the time, and it is a drama after all, but most of the time, the things that happen are heartbreaking. Because you care about some of these characters and bad things happen to a lot of people on that show. But it's because of their choices. It's so good. I, I just, I can't even tell you how good. Number one, Idris Elba. That was the first place I ever saw Idris Elba. As Stringer Bell. He made me want to be a drug dealer. He's so cool. Like, and it's not, it's not like, that's the thing that's cool about it. It's not glorified. It's just because he's a competent person who you could see doing anything else with his life. But this is where he was born. So this is what was available to him. And since he's generally smarter than all the other people, it was easy for him to rise and reach a level that he got comfortable at. That show launched a lot of people's careers. It was, um, it was one of the, it's one of those shows that at the time it was on, it was on HBO. It was on HBO at the time the Sopranos was on HBO and the Sopranos sucked up all the oxygen so that nobody, not nobody, very few people were watching it, but every critic was raving about it. And it ended up being probably, I mean, it is definitely mentioned most of the time with The Sopranos as number one, one of the greatest things HBO has ever done, but number two, as one of the greatest things TV has ever produced. And its reputation has only grown every year after it left the air um, to the point that, again, I and, and I am one of those people. I did not watch it when it was on the air. I watched it after it had stopped airing. And it was, I ordered the DVDs through Netflix mail at home service. So I got one disc at a time, and each disc had like two episodes on it. Jesus. So I'd have to watch two and then send it back and get another one. It took me a while to watch them all. Eventually, I bought all of them on DVD so I could own them. 
before because we didn't have streaming services and they didn't HBO didn't re-air things. Um, so I had them for years. Again, it's one that I watch every year. Now I get to watch it on Max. But I watch it every year. And every year I appreciate it even more. It's just an amazing, amazing show that is more about the city of Baltimore than anything else and the failings of the city of Baltimore and how every single misstep that everyone makes at every level causes this. So it's an indictment of the system and it's well done. So I can't recommend that highly enough. If you like drama, that's your show. So good. Uh, Lost. Mm-hmm. This was obviously the one that would overlap on ours because we both have a very huge appreciation for Lost. Yeah. It's one of my favorite shows of all time. I've watched it many, many times. And I love it. I, in fact, love the later seasons more than the early seasons. Same. And that puts us in the minority. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I agree with most people that season one is a perfect season of television. Great. It is fantastic. But I think the later seasons are more interesting. They are. For sure. And again, bigger swings. Much bigger swings. Big fucking swings. Yes. I mean, again, I, and I think, you know what it is, though, for the later seasons, what a lot of it is for me? Desmond. Desmond is great. A lot of it is Desmond. I agree. His episodes are, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like 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 a singularly like fantastic episode of television is the constant. The constant is one of the best. It's just a perfect episode. Agreed. You can watch that on its own. Yeah, you could. It's a standalone kind of story. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. Just every, just the whole, all of it about the, you know, the whole messaging about like fate and you know, I don't know. It's like every, like, like the the fact that all these people were were broken people and then they, you know, they find purpose and meaning and shit and on this island. But the the story evolves from like survival to time travel and ancient fucking gods and stuff. Is like, yeah. what, what is happening here? Exactly. It was great. That's what's so good about it. Where it starts and where it ends, huge differences. And the and the play with the the flashbacks and yep. then switching to the flash forwards, that huge Correct. Oh, just that 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 reveal, that twist, the the entire episode you've it been was watching huge. flash forwards. It was huge. And then the flash sideways. Yeah. Right? The controversial ending that most people don't understand for some reason, even though yeah. it's it's laid out verbatim by christian Christian. tells you exactly what it is yeah you believe him (laughs) yeah yeah i I, yeah uh great cast i love everybody the music is fantastic yeah giacchino Giacchino is so good it's funny Um, it was funny because like you know with mission impossible three four yeah and maybe five Mm. i think five might have changed but for three and four giacchino does the score for Mission Impossible, and uh, there's just so many there's so many instances that where the song sounds like Life and Death from Lost. Yeah, that that you know when Claire is having the baby yeah. while Boone is dying, and it, that whole scene, and it's just like that music became a, a recurring <clears throat> thing in the show. Uh, and I will say this: this is a hill I will die on. John Locke is one of the greatest characters in TV history. Yeah, hands down. Yeah, one of the greatest characters, and Terry O'Quinn's performance in this show, yeah, one of the greatest of all time. Him and uh, and Michael, um, what's his name? Ben Linus. Oh, Emerson. Yeah, Michael yeah, Emerson. Yeah, yeah, he's so good. Again, this was the introduction for most people to Michael Emerson, who's gone on to do tons of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I honestly would argue, along with John Locke, I w- I would say like even though some people would be like, yeah. I don't know. Jack Shepard as his like as his yeah, as the the counter yeah. is perfect. He is. He's just not given as much. He's not given. 
But he's mm. given, he is given a lot, and, he's, and, and I would he say his, his performance is, is no. great. Like Matthew Fox is great. Yeah. He's fantastic. I just think that, I think John Locke, he's given the bigger moments. Yes. For sure. For sure, but and it's because of it's because of what he represents. Correct. He represents the man of faith, and yeah. Jack is the the man, man of, of science. science. Yeah. But like he, that's that's what makes like again, that's what makes the show so great. Is like that those early, yeah. you know, the early banter between the two of them, and then the late banter, the season six flash sideways, oh, yeah. where he finally like sees what what John sees. Yeah. Ah, it's so good. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is. It's really, really good. The the subtle, the like the little things too, like in the show. So like I was just remembering this like the other day for like no reason. I just like all of a sudden was like thinking about it and I was like, Man, what a great fucking episode of TV. But it's the episode where um Sawyer believes that like they're gonna get off the island on their raft. Mm-hmm. And so he's like he's saying goodbye to Jack and then he's like, Hey, by the way and like Sawyer's just a shithead the entire time. Like leading up to this, you know, he's just been like a little piece of shit. Like in every episode, yeah. all the characters kind of hate him. Um, and then he's like, "Hey, by the way, like I met this guy in a bar in, a in bar. Sydney, yep. and like he just tells this little story, and like you know he's talking about his dad, and yeah. and he knows like halfway through he starts crying, kind of like yeah. the tears are coming. But you're just like, oh, what a great like moment where like Sawyer like redeems himself like a little bit, or like well, kind of a lot, like shows you like yeah. who he really is." True. I mean, that's the thing, dude. Like, they took Sawyer, who they made be the asshole con man, Mm -hmm. and by the end of the show, you love him. He's a family man. He's he's such a good guy. Yeah. He's the guy you would want to help you. Yeah, he's he's like more, he is more of the hero of the story than, than Jack is. Yeah. Yeah. It's such good good writing, just good character development. The yeah. use of the flashbacks was so good yeah. in fleshing Great. everybody out. Just so good. I mean, I, I know it has a reputation, and I don't know why. It has a reputation for people misunderstanding the ending. I know, but no, it's not just that. There are definitely, there are definitely people that that's the reputation, but those are the people that finished it. Yeah. There's a reputation out there of after season three, it's not worth it. And I'm like, what? Yeah, that's that's just, when it starts to get worth it, dude. That's just stupid. Yeah. That's so wild to me. And I get it because for some people, you know, like two and three were kind of boring to them. Two is two is, two shit. is boring. Yeah, but there's reasons for that. Yeah, but it, it's just Walt. one of those things. If you, <laughs> I mean, if you just stick with it, just stick through the Walt stuff. It's just stick through the Walt stuff. Stick with it, and man, I'm telling you, you're it's so rewarding to watch the rest of that show. Oh man, Hurley, I mean, I mean Hurley's oh, I mean, Hurley's fantastic. Uh, I was gonna say, Jen, Jen, oh, what an arc Jen son has, son and Jen, dude. yeah, son and Jen, fucking uh, uh, the other couple, um, <sighs> Rose and yes, Rose and Bernard, yeah. and they just decide, like, fuck it, we're, we're, fuck it, we're living here, we don't want any of your business, yeah. you guys do what you're gonna she's do, like, we're gonna you guys are always running off doing something, and she's like, I just don't, you say, like, we don't care, we're just, you know, we made our little house on this island, I get it, man, yeah, I get it, Hiroyuki Sonata in, like, season fucking five or six, whenever he shows up, yep, even, even characters that, like, you don't get to spend much time with, yeah, but but in the like last season, you know, with um with what's his face the the immortal guy. Um, oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Um, I forget his name. What the fuck? <laughs> Why can't I think of it? It's not Ricardo, is it? No. God damn it! I don't know. It's driving me crazy. I can't think of his name. But anyways, what the fuck? When when God Miles when Miles yeah. and them are in the boat and he's like hey he's like welcome to the club and he's like got the gray hair and he's like he's like weird he's like he's like now like now that like I can die whatever he's like I feel like living yeah and it's just like such a good like oh like but the reveal that like he was granted like immortality by this you know, ostensibly a god yeah basically I know God 
So good. It's just so good. Great show. And I I, I guess I can kind of understand people being like after season three, because it depends. Like you're either along for the ride or you're the kind of person that like you don't like your shows turning into something else. And Lost does. It does for sure. But it should be it should be known from the beginning that like you are dealing with supernatural stuff because we have the monster on the island. We We have yeah. You know, we have our little We know there are things going on. Yeah. That are not usual. So it's not really a bait and switch. Yeah, it's not really. just as the as it went along, the story grew and evolved. And you grow and evolve with it. Yeah. So I don't, it, to me it's worth it. It's a journey it, worth taking. It's kinda like Attack on Titan in that like I some people True. When when people complain about Attack on Titan, I'm like baffled. I'm like, what the f- what? Yeah. But they're like, Yeah, the whole shit with like Aaron and like the time traveling and like whatever. And I'm just like, oh my god, that's like the coolest shit. It is. Like that reveal and that twist of like, we're not alone, here's the rest of the world and blah, blah, blah. Like that's, for them, that's like, well, now the show's changed. It's not yeah. what I was like originally watching. And it's like, so? It's still the show. Oh, like it's man. just, it's cool. Yeah. But yeah, not whatever. Know. All right. Uh, I'm going to move down to Breaking Bad, which we already touched on a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um. I love this show. It was so close to making my list. So close. And the only reason it didn't is because I I have not rewatched it because I find it hard to watch. Yeah. Even though I love it. Yeah. I mean, I've rewatched it multiple times and it's great every fucking time. Yeah. The evolution of Walt and Jesse is spectacular. Going in different directions. Yeah. Jesse goes through hell, but emerges out the other side and becomes a good man who's just doing bad things. Yeah. Whereas Walt embraces who he always has been, which is just a fucking asshole who had the veneer of civility because of his station in life. But once he felt like he had no future anyway. Do whatever you want to do. He embraced who he truly is and showed us. Here's the thing if he had stayed at Gray Matter and not left or been forced out or whatever, he would have become the most asshole CEO yeah. ever because it would have enabled every bad tendency he had. And had the opportunity to pursue them. He would have left Skyler. Like they never would have been together. He nothing would have like it again. That's just who he was. And this show showed you how far he could fall. And how petty he could be about everything. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But as a character study on a terrible guy, it's one of the best. Yeah. It truly is. Because you, you, you do, you root for him in the beginning because you feel like he's, he's going from like zero to hero, that he's like a loser. Yeah. That's like picking himself up. Yeah. But then like, yeah, it's, it's not until later you realize like he was never, he was never like a loser. Like he mm. just, he did that to himself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the just... cat and mouse game between him and Hank, and then the way it ends, was so like I oh that episode is just so fucking brutal. Ozymandias, brutal. It is one of the best episodes of television ever made, and yes, it is devastating because again, the the audience when we start. Yes, you root for for Walt, mm-hmm. right? You're like, yes, he's finally standing up. He's being a man. He's providing for his family. Mm-hmm. He's planning for a future without him, but so that they don't ever have to worry. And yeah, it's not for a couple of seasons that you start to say, well, he could have been done. He could have walked away, and he would have been fine. Yeah. He likes it. He likes it. He likes doing this. Yeah. He likes the he likes the respect he's getting. Exactly. And 
throughout that entire thing, we get the Hank stuff. We get the piecing it together, getting closer and closer. <clears throat> and at first, you're like, is Hank going to catch him? Is he gonna is he gonna get him? Is that what we're leading to? And somewhere along the way, yes, you start to root against Walt and for Hank, which makes the resolution of that the most devastating thing you could think of. Especially because like in it's it's because then it, it like the it flips and Walt is like Walt is trying to save He's him. Trying to save him, but it's too late. And it's like it's too late. And then, and then just the re- like the the reveal from Hank. Yeah. Hank being the one that knows what's about to happen. Where yeah. he's like yeah. he's like you idiot. You couldn't tell he decided to kill me 15 minutes ago. Yeah. He just he knows already. Yeah. But it's basically like you did you did this. Yeah. Like you got me killed. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And yeah. then Still, even though we know how terrible he is, when he decides to come back, and we know he's coming back for two specific reasons, but again, the catalyst is Gray Matter and his old colleagues. Because he sees them and he realizes, you know what? I have a way. I know how to do it. And I need to save Jesse. <laughs> hmm. ah, it's so good. Just iconic. And then iconic, like, scenes and characters. I mean, Gus Fring. Gus Fring is so good. And, of course, his demise is like, oh. <laughs> it's such a good. It's so good. I agree. Because there's that moment where you're like, did, it did he survive? F- did it fail? Yeah. And then the camera pans over. You're like, oh no, half of his fucking face, face is blown away. Ah, yeah. uh, so good. The, yeah, just the Je- Jesse's arc is just like, oh, it's so good. It's and it's fan. Uh, here's the thing. I would say for anybody who, which if you haven't seen Breaking Bad at this point, like it's crazy. But hey, there's a lot of people. people some people then haven't seen. I haven't seen the fucking Wire or I Sopranos. Know. Yeah. Um, watch Breaking Bad. Do not watch El Camino. I, I feel like it it tarnishes it's, Jesse's look, character just a little bit to the point where like if you don't watch it, Breaking Bad is just perfect. True. If you watch El Camino, it like kind of takes a little something away, just a little bit, a little from maybe. Jesse specifically. From Jesse, yes, but it's not terrible. It doesn't ruin anything. No, it's just it's just like an it's unnecessary, just unnecessary, really. Yeah, we didn't need it. Yeah, uh, I know some people were they were annoyed because of the ambiguous. Did Jesse get away? Or and that's not the point. That's not the point. The point is he was no longer locked up and making meth. Yeah, it didn't matter. He wasn't there. He was free. In that moment, he was free, and that's all that fucking mattered. Yeah. Aaron Paul was so good. I hated Jesse Pinkman at the beginning. Oh, that yeah. first season. I fucking hated him. I thought he was bitch. a fucking whiny piece of shit. Yeah, bitch. It was and by the end, I loved that kid. Yeah. He was so good. Oh, the ricin. <sighs> yeah. Just uh, all of that. Like, all of that. All of that was so good. Um, Jesse Plemons as Todd. Yes. That was my first introduction to Jesse Plemons. Because I didn't watch Friday Night Lights, which he was on. Yeah, I didn't hear. Um but I'll tell you this, chilling. Oh, yeah. The the fact that he was basically just a sociopath with the worst family in history. <sighs> when he shot that fucking kid, dude. <laughs> God damn it. Yep. Ugh. And then you had, of course, you still had Saul Goodman in it. Still had Bob so Odenkirk. He was great. We had um, what's his face with the uh, the old man with the. Remember, he was always concerned about his granddaughter. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. What's his face? Um, 
Fuck. I forget his name. God damn it. Mike. Mike Airman Trout. God damn it. Why can't I think of a fucking name? <sighs> also yeah. in Better Call Saul with yeah. a very large role. Um, I will say that, yes, I considered Better Call Saul in the Freaks and Geeks spot because I it is a fantastic show. Um, it is a different show. Yeah. Very different feel than Breaking Bad, um, but no less compelling of a character study. Uh, because Saul Goodman, um, or Jimmy McGill, is a tragic figure as well, making the same terrible choices that enable who he truly is. Um, so again, it's a parallel. It's just the stakes are not as high as Breaking Bad, but they do come back around. And if you are more interested in Mike and Gus, you will get a lot out of Better Call Saul. They spend a lot more time on them. Hmm. So you do get a lot out of that. Um, and it does have a good ending. Both of them are fantastic endings that pitch perfect, fit those characters in that story, makes the most sense, and you get you get to feel what you want to feel when those characters end up where they end up. Um, it's just fantastic, obviously. You know, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Number one, you're missing out on a lot of pop culture shit because there's a lot of stuff from that. There's a lot of lines. I am the one who knocks. Like, mm-hmm. come on, dude. There's a lot of stuff from that show. Uh, okay. Seinfeld. Yeah. This is one we're going to disagree on. Obviously, you don't like Seinfeld, but yeah. Um, it was the anti sitcom sitcom. And. It was fantastic. Every sitcom that you watch now, especially if you're watching it 20 years after it aired, Mm -hmm. it's going to feel dated. It's going to feel um, of its time. And it's going to feel quaint because comedy is ever evolving. The boundaries are always being pushed. And so things that were funny on I Love Lucy are going to be looked at now as very, very, very pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Um, Things that were funny on Seinfeld in, you know, 1992 are going to feel very, very pedestrian by today's standards. I get that. But the kinds of things they were doing, not just... The jokes, which were still good, um, like the sitcom aspect of that show, it is well written in terms of like bringing various threads together. Sometimes, especially in the later seasons, it relies too much on like forced coincidence or you know things like that, whereas it felt more organic in the heyday. Um, but that's because at some point you start to run out of stories to tell. And so you have to start inventing things that are outside of the bounds of credibility and you just fly in the face of it and say, you know what? Embrace the craziness. Um, But that is why Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David decided in 1998, this is it. We're done. We're going out on top. We were the number one show. There's no reason for us to continue to do this. We've made so much money. They were going to make and they did make so much money selling it in syndication. Like, they made their, their entire fucking fortune on that show. They didn't need to push it anymore. And they felt like creatively, it was starting to become bankrupt. And so that's definitely a kudo to them to walk away. Now, the final episode, not great. <laughs> uh, again, the conceit of the episode was ridiculous on its face. And everybody was just like, this is like nothing. And lo and behold, 
It's a show about nothing. So it makes sense. I get what they were doing. I just wanted it. I wanted to go out with a banger of an episode, an episode that was an all timer, like the contest or something like that, that people would remember forever. And it didn't do that. It almost went out with a whimper. So that would be its legacy, except that it still had an amazing cast. Jason Alexander and Julia Louis-Dreyfus are so good on that show. Michael Richards is fine. Kramer itself is just kind of a, a one-note character. He's the, yeah, he's the Barney Stinson of the group. Yeah, right? Or the Joey Tribbiani. And Jerry, you can tell, especially in the early episodes, he did not know how to act. Sure. It was, he was very stilted, you know, stuff like that. He grew into it because if you're just playing yourself, it's probably pretty easy once you figure it out. So he grew into it. Again, he was game to try things that you would not expect him to try for the show. And he was good. He did a good enough job. But Julia Louis-Dreyfus and Jason Alexander were the standouts on that show. Julia Louis-Dreyfus obviously has gone on to do some amazing stuff. She's, she's fantastic. Um, but it will always be the sitcom of sitcoms for me because I grew up watching it mm-hmm. and I loved it. Mine will always be Roseanne. There you go. Uh, my final one. Yeah. The Sopranos. Oh my God. I hear about this goddamn show all the time. There's a reason. I feel like I know everything about it. You and I've know never seen it. nothing about it. And I've never seen it. And you never probably will because you're a contrarian who likes, who oh, hates it's, joy. It's because I feel like I've seen it already because people but you have talked so Just much about it. it. And you'll understand. I already understand everything. Joey Walnuts. Boom. You done. Don't. I understand you everything. Don't. It's Polly Walnuts. Polly Walnuts. Joey Tribbiani. <laughs> Joey Tribbiani's not on that show. Hey, same thing. And damn it. Although Drea DiMatteo was, and she was on the show Joey with him. Um, okay. I'm going to get this off. Right off the bat, James Gandolfini. Yeah, horrible actor. <sighs> That's what you're going to say, right? James Gandolfini, <laughs> the goddamn treasure. Hmm. He is the linchpin of that entire show, not just because he's the main character. And if we didn't buy that this mobster had anxiety and just didn't fit in the world then it would fall apart immediately, right? But we do. And he goes on an evolution that is hard to describe because, and I think this is so good, in reality, Tony doesn't change much. He talks about changing. He recognizes what he should do. But he's kind of the quintessential American. He's ultimate, like, yeah, real life American. He knows what he's supposed to do and he doesn't do it. Goes to therapy and doesn't and doesn't change. Do anything about it. <laughs> Does not become better. No. Yeah. And that's it's a metaphor for America, man. It's so good, and he is so good. And Edie Falco is amazing as Carmela Soprano. She is so good. Everybody in the show is great. They really are. Um I would say Christopher is the, mm, yeah, I, I'd i probably say he's the Jesse Pinkman of this show. Is that his son? No. Oh. It's his nephew. Nephew. So he starts out a whiny little gangster bitch. Yeah. And where he ends up is very different. And I hated him when I started it, and by the end, I loved him. He's a great he's a great character. Um, but everybody had great arcs in there. The writing is so good on that show. Um, it, it's just, uh, yes, there are definitely. So we all know, obviously, the conceit of the show is that it's a mobster who ends up going to therapy which they just stole from Analyze This. 
<laughs> and just did a dramatic version of it instead of a comedy version of it. Um, but that's okay. It, it still works. The problem that some people have with it is that that's where it starts. And after about two seasons of that, it becomes a much more traditional just gangster show. But that's okay because by that point, you're invested in these characters and you like to see what Tony's going to do. Because he is faced with some challenges that are unique to his lifestyle. Um, and that show may be only second to Twin Peaks has some of the best dream sequences of all time. And they are very pointed dream sequences that really do explain some things. Uh, they do a good job of it. Uh, and I really enjoyed it. Um, there's also a quasi afterlife sequence in this show that is interesting. Weird. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, but it's because of how big a phenomenon it became, it obviously brought in a lot of like guest stars, like different people. Like per season, somebody new came on. Steve Buscemi was on it for like a season. And he's fantastic. There's just a lot of good stuff. Um, yes. Tom Holland was in a season. No. Tom Holland. Chris Pratt. Was in a season. Chris Pratt was in a season. No. <sighs> it's such a good show. It really is. Yes, it is one of the best HBO shows of all time, sitting up there with The Wire for me. It is, to me, one of the greatest shows of all time. Um, yes, if you don't like gangster stuff, you might have to sit through some shit. Yeah. But it's worth it in the end. And the end, by the way, is terrible. Is very divisive. Divisive at the time, probably as misunderstood as the lost ending. Yeah. But when you really think about it and you put the pieces together, you understand exactly what happened. And you understand why it was done the way it was done. He was shot. Well, I'm not going to talk about that, but. Maybe. Was he? Maybe. What do you we think? We don't know. What do you think? Uh, to me, yeah, he's probably shot in the back of the head. <laughs> and that's basically lights out. Correct. Which was the, the, the show is his show, so it's like if he's dead, there's nothing left, so it just ends right there. True. Yeah. Like I said, fitting ending works on many levels. Yeah, I remember, I remember that ending... And like I like I heard about it like a ton. I was just like I would never seen the show, nothing. But I just I remember people being so mad. I remember listening to the radio in the morning on my way to school, and like one of the fucking little whatever people, Kid Craddock in the morning, whatever, and they're all complaining about it and everything. Sure, he's like I, I freaking you know put this many years of my life into that fucking show, <laughs> watching it every single vote, and then yeah, and he's just like bitching that the ending sucked and the ending was fantastic it's and perfect that's, that's how people were with loss i know they're like goddamn six years of my fucking life and i'm like what are you talking about i don't know i don't know but yeah anyway it's uh sopranos is on my it's on my list to watch yeah you gotta it's, watch it man. it's, it's dead, so good it's dead last next God, to the wire Christ, God but here's damn why you here's why i've heard the wire and the sopranos are the best tv shows ever made right so i put them at the very bottom of the list They'll be the last things I watch before I die. <laughs> <laughs> I will die at the, at the same time Tony Soprano dies. It'll be the last thing I've watched. And I'll be like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I get to heaven. Hey, what do you think about the Sopranos? Like, it's okay. Jesus. It's a little derivative. <laughs> all right, that's by three by three. Nice. Pretty much everything on here I would have guessed except, I think... The only ones you, that I, freaks and geeks you wouldn't have guessed. Freaks and geeks, I kind of, I kind of did because it was on my list. Mm. But then I was like, I have to be honest with myself. I was like, I like the show, but I didn't rewatch it ever. Yeah, I've so I took it, it off many times. Um, but no, I would say freaks and geeks and Arrested Development were the only two that I was that seeing this. I was kind of like, okay, like yeah, those are like it's like I know you like comedy, but then like there's times where like I, I'm like I don't think he likes comedy. I think he just likes like very dramatic. Because <laughs> like everything else is very dramatic. Yeah, usually, I like drama, but yeah. I do like comedies. I just only like like to me well written comedies. Yeah, which would be like not so much 
Not your usual like sitcom. Yeah, it'd be more like like your your very like uh, uh, what's the word? Very, it's like the very talky kind of comedies where it's like you have to like really pay attention to what people are saying Generally, and yeah. And yeah, like everything's like a kind of like a either like a reference or a. I am big on referential comedy. Yeah, it's what people would consider to be like smart comedy. Yes, that's generally my wheelhouse. I love dumb comedy. I know. Let's see your list. I love all comedy. And there's Blake's list. Boom. Yeah, when I looked at this list, I said, "Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that makes sense." Yeah, definitely. And then I said, hmm, really? And then I said, really? And then I said, what the fuck is the one in the middle? Because <laughs> I've never heard of that. I had to look it up. Have you not heard of that? I talk about it all the time. I've never heard you talk about that, ever. Are you serious? Yeah. You must talk about it with somebody else. You've never talked about it with me. Uh, well, I mean, James, because like, the two of us got into it, but yeah. Yeah. Huh. All right. Well, I'll just start from the beginning because I again I do mine alphabetical. Okay. Um, and this was this was the the so this is actually the one that was the the like yeah. last minute little squeeze it in here. Actually, this one and another one we'll get to. Um, but I was like, okay, I didn't put Avatar on my anime because I don't consider it an anime. Right. I was thinking about cartoons. I had Family Guy. I had South Park. I had Futurama. I almost had Futurama. I almost had Rick and Morty on my. I had Rick and Morty. I almost had Rick and Morty. I had them all on there, and I was looking at them, and I was like, "Okay, have I rewatched any of these? Have I expanded on these? Right? Right. Avatar doesn't just end with Avatar; it goes on to the Legend of Korra. Right. There are graphic novels that I've read, so I'm like, like there's there's a whole world. There's a live action we tried to watch. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Um. But no, like that, that was it, I don't know. It, for me, it was just like okay, Avatar is a is a great show that just happens to be a cartoon. Yeah. So makes the list because it was the first kind of I would say it's the first like cartoon I saw that I was like like watching it older that I was like huh like maybe cartoons maybe not just anime but maybe like Western cartoons can be good too mm-hmm. instead of just like. SpongeBob and right. Adventure Time, like the the stupid shit, sure. where like everything is like a dumb joke and and like making funny noises and being goofy. And this show actually has like heart. There's a, I mean, there's a famous episode that everybody talks about, it's the Bossing Say episode, where uh, what's his face, Uncle Iroh goes and has his own little adventure, and you follow him the entire episode, and he's reminiscing about his like dead son. Who, like died in the war or whatever, and it's just like a super sad ending, and then everybody cries. Everybody's just like it's like a big fucking episode. Mm. You watch reaction videos online, and like everybody's everybody fucking tearing up, right? Because it just hits you, and you're like, sure, shit. Like, how did a cartoon do that? Hey man, Prince Prince Zuko has one of the best arcs. Okay, you can kind of see it coming, yeah. right? Starts off as a villain. Yeah, we know he's going to teach Aang firebending and shit later on. He becomes a good guy, rebels against his father. You find out the, their whole backstory, which is fucked up. You find out his father's the one that gave him a scarred face. Yeah. Uh, you have Toph, a blind girl who knows earthbending. Hmm. And she's, like, disgusting. She reminds me of, like, Power from Chainsaw Man. Okay. She's, like, always picking her nose. Sure. She's, like, dirty booger <laughs> face and stuff. She's just, like, a disgusting character, but, like, funny. Big comedic relief because Aang's comedy starts to, like, wear off where he becomes, like, more serious. He's, like, being mm-hmm. less of a kid. Sure. So then they, they have to bring in other characters who are more kid-like to continue the, you know, the, the family-friendly cartoon stuff so that kids that are watching this are like, oh, okay, well, now I like Toph because she's, like, silly. Yeah. Um, but just a fantastic show. Okay. And I also okay. love Legend of Korra, but this I put this one here because I'm like, this is what started it all. Yeah. And they're still continuing. Again, the graphic novels continue more. And they go back and tell like a prequel, but they, they actually like continue more of the story in between this and Korra and, and it's a fun world. I like the earth bending or I like all the uh, bending and yeah. the the animals and Appa and just fun shit. Okay. Uh next on the list, Downton Abbey. This one's interesting because I almost didn't put it on the list. Okay. But then the reason I did was because 
I was like, it's it's one of the first like total drama, no sci-fi elements, no yeah. action elements, sure, no nothing. It's just strictly like talking and like characters, yeah, and that's it. And like, yes, while it's funny and that it's got its little highbrow British humor, it's got British humor, yes, um, it's not British humor like. The next one, Gervais, yeah, yeah. So like it, it, but it's just and it's a beautiful show. The music's fantastic. Oh, I love the music. the The storylines are great. All the characters are fucking great. The actors are fantastic. Actors are show. amazing. The all the people who have come and gone from the show. Dan Stevens. I mean, like, yeah, it just great. I agree. And every time there's a movie, I get excited to return to the world of Downton Abbey. Yeah. And like I like the movies. Like some people are like, eh, the movies. I'm They're like, good. I like them. I enjoy them. Again, I just like the world. Yeah, I just want to be like back in the world. Back in that world for two hours is just like, yeah, it's like a little vacation. And that was kind of part of my criteria too. Was like, would I want to be a part of this like world? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like I would only want to be a part of that world if I was also a noble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Um, the dog, I mean, just, you know, everything's good. Yeah. The way they talk, the fucking, the impact it had, you know, on other, it had an impact on Himium. There's a whole running joke with, uh, a, a fake show that they're watching yeah. that's, that is Downton Abbey that they're making fun of. And, sure. Cause it had such an impact where people were like, how is this like hoity toity rich person, you know, British, you know, whatever show so fucking good. Guys, the way it took, the way it took over america yeah is insane wild because that's not the kind of show that usually does that no not at all (laughs) yeah on bbc it was it was on pbs in america yep so like even it's even on a network that no one watches Yeah, most people don't watch pbs yeah amazing yeah um yeah just a, a great a great drama Again, I was like, I haven't, I don't watch a lot of just like strictly dramas. So, like, I don't have The Wire, Sopranos. I don't have any. Yeah. Breaking Bad, again, is like, I, like, I almost had it on my list, but it's, it's one that, like, I don't feel excited to return to it because I feel like that. For me, so here's the thing for me. For me, like, really tense, violent, like, fucked up shows where, like, beloved characters die. And, you know, like Game of Thrones yeah. and, and stuff like that are fantastic. Like, I would give them, like, a 10 out of 10. I'd recommend them to everybody. These are amazing shows. You got to watch them. But then if you ask me, like, hey, do you want to rewatch it? I'm be like, nah, not at all. Like, I have, I'm not in the... Yeah. I'm never in the mood to, yeah. like, relive that. If you give me a new show, I'll check it out. Because it's all new. It's surprising. And, like, I like the yeah, element of being surprised. But, like... I can't. I don't know. I just don't like. I don't like sitting back and rewatching that and rewatching like you know, yeah, the mountain crush a guy's fucking head again. I'm just like yeah, right. Like yeah, <laughs> it's it's brutal, but it's also like I saw it already. It's a, it's lost its effect. The, yeah. I like the high of like the surprise, but then yeah. like I don't. Yeah, I get it. If I want to return to something, it's something that's lighthearted and yeah, it easy gives you to good feeling. Yeah, yeah. Um, next on the list, extras. It's, I think it's still to this day, I mean, it is, it's to this day, it's still my favorite uh, Ricky Gervais show. I like it better than The Office. I definitely like it better than his later stuff, Derek and, and Afterlife and all that shit. Yeah. Um, it's just fantastic because it's, it's, it's his humor mixed with celebrity cameos. Yep. It has the, I mean, he did it with um, Life's Too Short where he'd have the celebrities come in and it'd just be like ridiculous like, anti versions yeah, of, themselves. of themselves of their public personas <laughs> yeah. or whatever and it's it's oh it's fantastic like there's kate winslet oh, just being one's... like an absolute I like know. maniac <laughs> orlando bloom being like a jealous little like bitch you have uh daniel radcliffe in there being like a horny little you know yeah. child it's, it's fantastic yeah i love good it stuff it's ben fun. stiller's in it he's a fucking mm-hmm. like asshole but like talking about how much like how he like he you know he, again, has like a little fragile ego, and it's just yeah. it's funny because he, you know, yeah. and I like Ricky Gervais. I like his comedy. I, I like his stand-ups and stuff. I, I'm I'm a fan of his. 
I, the the atheism stuff, whatever I understand, gets a little old, sure. um, especially when he injects it into the TV shows. If there's a little bit in his stand up, there's like a portion where he gets on like an atheist little rant. It's like, all right, well, it's stand up. It's it's yeah. part of his comedy routine. But when when he has like an episode of like Afterlife, and the whole episode is like characters being like, well, why don't you believe in God? And he's like, well, why do you believe in God? And then he, he's, he's coming up with these, like, Christopher Hitchens-esque arguments. You're just kind of like, I, dude, like, leave it alone. Which is why I like extras so much. It's not in there. Not in there, yeah. It's just, like, him and Stephen Merchant being, like, goof. And Stephen Merchant in extras is fucking amazing. Just the stupidest comedy, like, him being his agent that just, like, sucks at everything. He catches him at one point. He comes in, and he's, he's fucking... Jerking off in the office. Didn't lock the door or anything. Just he's, he's supposed to be like a professional agent getting him work and he's just he's jacking off. It's great. Yeah, it's fantastic. Good. Yeah, it's funny, like I also love that it's short. Yeah. That's true. Two seasons in a movie. Yeah. But the seasons are like six episodes each or something. They're like they're short. Yeah, it's like the British version. Yeah. And then, it, like, it has a good arc because he, like, it, it does the same thing. Like, he does the same thing he does with, with all of his, like, shows is, you know, he plays, like, the little dickhead, shitty character. And then he, like, gets kind of what he wants and then realizes that, like, he, you know, he's, like, a worse person than he was. Yeah. Even though he's already kind of a bad person. But it's right. because of that pursuit of the thing that he wanted that he gives it up and kind of reverts back. It's, you know, a very simple kind of little moral story thing there but yeah i like it it's it's a it's a cute show as it my... is a cute show i agree with that yeah yeah the uh, i mean i like Rich, ricky gervais in general um but the the revelation to me was and going forward into other things was steven merchant mm-hmm. was how funny he is he's amazing he is so fucking good yeah in everything Hello, ladies. Yeah, fantastic. Was so funny. Yeah. He was so good. It was a bummer because like that that didn't that show did not get the attention it deserved. It was so good. And then they came out and they wrapped it up with like a little movie, know, a little movie thing. Yeah, yeah. But he's I mean he's great in extras. He's amazing in um he's great in 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 an idiot abroad yeah. where it's just the two of them like just just kind of talking. But then the Ricky Gervais um podcast. I mean that that like that is probably Stephen Merchant at his funniest when it's just like the two of them talking. Yeah, yeah. But he's great. It's just, yeah, it, you can kind of see where like his, you can see in in The Office and Extras, in particular, those two shows where, where you can tell like half of it is is Merchant's humor yeah. and half of it's Gervais's. But that's what makes it so great. And then when it becomes strictly Ricky Gervais humor, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. It has less of the, less of the jacking off, you know, kind of humor. The like, l- like less of the absurd, like the absurd humor. Sure. But like, oh, there's uh, this iconic where he plays the gay genie, <laughs> and he's doing that play, whatever. And, he's, and then, I mean, but the the it has like catchphrases, like when he finally gets the TV show, and he's like the. Um, he's like the boss of like the little factory workers or whatever, and he's got the glasses and the wig, and it's just it's funny because it's like it's a it's also like a commentary on on like how TV shows are made and how producers like interfere with stuff and yeah. how they they change your vision and like you know they won't see the comedy you see they just see like the lowest common denominator and that was his whole thing was like I don't want lowest common denominator yeah. and they're like but that's what sells like that's what's gonna make you famous. And be funny, but then at the expense of when you run into people in real life, they're gonna quote the stupid line that you say over and over again, your dumb catchphrase. Yep. Which leads me to friends. There you go. For me, this is my Seinfeld. This is the sure. sitcom I grew up on. Yeah. Which is kind of weird because Friends was like like supposed to be basically right before my time, and how I met your mother was kind of like during slash like right after like my i fell somewhere like in between the two mm. which is why like i have both of them on the list because like they're i don't know like it's 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 weird but like friends was definitely the one that like came home was you know again i didn't watch it from the beginning but like 
caught it as it was like airing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those early seasons were reruns because I'm like I wasn't watching it when you know in 1997 or eight whenever the first season came out. 94. Um, 94. Fuck you're right because like the yeah the 911 episode doesn't happen to like way later. Mm-hmm. Um, which there's not a whole episode on it, but there's just the you can the towers are no longer there. Yeah, <laughs> and you realize oh this is when oh. it happened. <laughs> um, it's fantastic. I mean, yeah, I mean it's great. Great show. Great characters. Yeah. Um, quotable. I mean, I've watched I've watched Friends. Out of all of these, I've watched Friends and How I Met Your Mother the most. Yeah, I've probably watched Friends the most. Friends is the most for me out of all of these. For sure. Like I, I just put it on like I put it on like every night, all the time. Just like rotate between this and How I Met Your Mother. When I finish one, I start the other one up again. Fall asleep to it. It's just I don't know. It's like comfort food. Yeah. Sure. Love all the characters. Of course. It's amazing that like the the influence to like Jennifer Aniston, her haircut, like all that shit. It's also kind of interesting because like going back and watching the like the Friends reunion and like finding out sort of like the history of like Friends and how it all kind of started. It's it's kind of amazing to me that like Courtney Cox was like she was the central like get for the show. They were like banking the popularity of the show on her. Yeah, they were like, well, she's our big star. And I'm like, really? Like, what did she do before this? When she was in the Masters of the Universe movie with Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> yeah. She was in uh, Dancing in the Dark, the Bruce Springsteen video. He, like, pulls oh, her yeah, up yeah. out of the crowd and dances on stage with her, but she was, like, in the video. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, she had been in a few things. It's just weird because it's like, yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's just weird because of, like, how the trajectory of all the characters and like how it, it would eventually go yeah. with, I would, I would say it's safe to assume that like Jennifer Aniston became the biggest star out of all of, all of them. Oh yeah, for sure. At this point. Yes. And then like the characters you thought were going to be huge ended up not. And like, there's, there's like, you know, there's drug reasons or yeah. Matthew Perry's history is pretty tragic. Like yeah. just all the stuff that happened with him. Nothing really happened with, um, what's her face? Plays Phoebe, Lisa Kudrow. Yeah, I mean she's she had came, a couple. Of she's series. had a couple of little TV shows. She had that the comeback back. and yeah. stuff like that, and she did pretty well. David Schwimmer, just like like what happened to him, man? He can like barely speak. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, so can you know Matthew Perry is yeah. similar, but and then like you, you hear the rumors of like Schwimmer, just like how much of an asshole he was to like fans, yeah. and it's like understandably again, kind of like what I was saying with extras. You know, you you create a catchphrase in these sitcoms because that's that's what they do, and you know yeah. it's lowest common denominator. That's who's watching your show. That's who's in your audience to to laugh for the laugh track. Everybody just yells "pivot" at him all the time. They yell "pivot." They yell yeah. "we were on a break." That's the one he hates yeah. the most. Of course. So he talks about that and talks about being like angry, he and yelling at fans and shit. Um, and then you have you know Matt LeBlanc. You've got your "how you doing?" You have all that shit. Yeah. You know. They have uh, yeah. Chandler Bing. Could you be in the yeah. bubble? Yeah. Everybody's got their little thing. Of course. But I can understand them getting annoyed with fans, but it's like at the same time, you guys are fucking stars. Like, Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't be there without the fans. Yeah. So, I, I yeah, I think they understand. And I think at this point, they've come around again. Yeah. To understanding, you know, that. But they've all had varying degrees of success outside of Friends, so... None of them are, even though that will be on their tombstone. Oh, yeah. You know. Along with pepperonis. Most of them, yeah, of course. Most of them have moved beyond friends and just realized it was a great time in their life. It gave them what they have. Yeah. And so they're appreciative of it. Yeah, they just can't. They can't understand why audiences are like are stuck in that time. Like where why we want like we just want to see this over and over again. We just want our friends yeah, back. Like you said, it's just comfort food. Yeah, you know, that's that's the thing. Like there's there they talk about it. There's like a disconnect between the relationship of an audience and a movie star versus the audience and a television star. Because you usually spend way more time with a television star on your screen. So you feel like you have a closer parasocial relationship. You feel like you know them. Yeah. You feel like they are one of your friends. Yeah. 
Um, Especially the sitcom, because it's just like the little day in the life kind of exactly. stories. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. But yeah. yeah, Friends is a fantastic show. I mean, it also like it. It, it has. Like one of the strongest pilot episodes. I did, yeah, it was very strong. Of TV, which I would, I'll say, I agree with the same thing with How I Met Your Mother. I think that pilot episode is is a perfect episode of TV. Um, it also has a great ending. True, fantastic ending. It, it, it wraps it everything well. up. The iconic, I got off the plane, like you know that whole yeah. thing, and people were screaming and shit. It was, it's great because the will they, won't they? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Monica and Chandler getting together, like yeah, that whole secret was great, and then all the cameos too, all the all the actors oh, who have come and who, gone, yeah, especially the ones they were all in relationships with at some point, yeah, <laughs> Paul Rudd being in like the final fucking two seasons, two seasons or whatever, yeah. yeah, it's like, all right, I know, <laughs> wild, but I mean there was you know we had Billy Crystal was in an episode with uh, Robin, Robin Williams. Williams. Yeah, they were doing Father's Day and popped over. Yeah, and then uh, fucking um, Bruce Willis being yeah. the the Bruce girlfriend's Willis. Ross's girlfriend's dad. You had Sean Penn. You had Brad Pitt. You had Ari Gross. You had um... yeah. The Brad Pitt episode's great because he's dating Jennifer Aniston at the time, but then it's a it's an I hate I hate Rachel, Rachel Green yeah. stuff. So it's like it's it's so good. Yeah, it's great. I agree. Sean Penn was great. Yeah, he was. Nervous he was really little good. guy that was he's dating her sister, you know, twin, but then... Yeah. Yeah. Good it's shit, good. dude. It's good stuff. But there's also, like, actors where, like, I was like, oh, shit, like, they went on to go, you know, you know, Paget Brewster, like, you know, yep. seeing her, and I was like, oh, yeah, she went on to go do this and this, and but, like, you see them in, again, like we talked about uh, with, what's her face? Um, the little girl, the little... May Whitman? Yeah. I, like, I already forgot her name, but we just talked about it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Getting late. <laughs> Great show. Yeah, it is. Fantastic show. Next one. Downtown. Gaki no sky. No laughing Batsu game. Fantastic. Okay. It is so downtown is the comedy duo that's their that's their name. Yeah. It's um Matsumoto and um Hamada. So the two of them, they make up downtown. The other three um, join them. They're part of their own like little comedy groups, um, but then they join them every year for New Year's Eve. They do the No Laughing Batsu game. It's a 24-hour huge like event, like a variety show kind of event in Japan. I should say that. This is a Jap- Japanese fully Japanese show. show. Yeah. Um, but they... So the rule is if you laugh, you get punished. The first season they did, the first like of, you know when they did this um it was blow darts so every time you laughed the one of the oni like little ninja guys would come out and he would blow dart a little paper like like you know a needle with like the little paper fans mm-hmm. whatever blow dart their ass so they get it in their ass and they pull it out and they'd be like ah, like what so obviously they couldn't keep doing that because it's like fucking it's probably painful yeah so after that it 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 switched over to big foam like like little like mm. noodle kind mm-hmm. of things and they get like a whack on the ass. Mm. But it's just it's a ridiculous like without watching it, it's like hard to it's kinda hard to explain beyond that premise, but like they they so there's like a theme every year and the five of them go to like a place and then they're forced to stay there for twenty four hours and the show, like the producers and the director behind the show have like put together like obstacles to make them laugh. Mm-hmm. So they'll bring in like famous like Japanese like stars like celebrities and stuff, and have them do like ridiculous little skits and you know whatever to make them laugh. And then they'll like play like these games, and it becomes like a thing where like after the first like three seasons, I call them seasons, but it's like they do it every year. So after the first three yeah. episodes, okay. by like the fourth year, they've like they've fallen into a pattern where like the same things kind of happen mm. every year where they they change into the, like they change into clothes for whatever the theme is so like if it's like one year they're they're teachers right at the beginning they all meet at like this you know some location whatever and then they go into these little changing rooms and then they come back out and they they're in their like teachers outfits okay. and Hamada is always like the one that gets like the girl wig and the girl outfit okay. and they just do that to him mm. and so then he becomes like that's like the first little joke 
or whatever. Um, but the show, I mean, it's so they're long, like they're like eight hours, like each. Jesus. So like it's because it's like for them it's twenty four hours of, yeah. of just like dealing with this, um, but it's it's. I would say like like for people, and you can look it up on YouTube. There's so many clips from their show. Not just from the Batsu games, but like from um, they invented Silent Library, which became uh, an American MTV like little game show where like you're in a library, you everybody like flips over a card. And if you got the skull card, like everybody has like a safe card and there's like one skull card. So like you mix them up in the center and then you distribute them. And if you flip it over and you get the skull card, you have to do whatever like the punishment is on the little board, whatever. And they mm. reveal like a new thing that you have to do. And so there will be like, uh, like you have to take like a lobster pinch to the nose or whatever. But like you can't make a noise because you're in like the yeah, silent, silent library. library yeah. So it's just like a bunch of like stupid, like little goofy. The thing is, it works so well with like japan and like the japanese people and like the whole japanese aesthetic whatever it didn't work with like america mm-hmm. when they brought silent library over here it was like people kind of like watched it and they were like oh, it, like what is this like mm-hmm. it feels i don't know mm-hmm. you'd have to watch an episode of it or like watch clips on like youtube and like and you'd get it because like a lot of the humor comes from uh like cultural stuff in japan like like talking to your, you know, your elder without using the proper mm. sort of, you mm. know, honorifics sure. or whatever. Um, there's like comedy in that. There's comedy in like the way that that Japanese names are like spelled. They can be like, I don't even fully understand it myself, but like the like the name can be can mean other words as well. Okay. So he'll like like one of the like one of the guys will be like, oh yeah, like my name, you know, like he'll say introduce his name to like some celebrity person cameo whatever and uh and they'll be like oh is that row is in like this word or row is in this word and then he'll like you know so it's like weird like that their names like mean stuff mm-hmm. but then like some of the like the little people whatever will like just call them like the wrong thing and it's like it's funny because it's like disrespectful and it's mm-hmm. again it's all japanese humor and you have to understand the culture and all that shit whatever sure. but this was something that james and i got into and watching it like high is like just perfect okay. because it's fucking long yeah you can just like eat munch on food and be high and watch this shit and just giggle at like every little thing yeah i could see that and it's it's great okay i would i would i would advise people to look up like batsu game look up like batsu game like 10 10 10 on youtube like watch that clip mm-hmm. to kind of like understand what okay. it is um but then like they even like went as far as to like some of the the like the actual people who play this like they they will expose things about their real life like in the show and like ju- like just embarrassing shit and there's like just this like one great like scene where in one of the episodes um the the one guy endo he gets like all these like text messages like exposed where he was like flirting with some girl and like abusing his like mm-hmm. power at like on you know being a tv like mm-hmm. personality whatever to try to like get on like you know get a date with this other lady on a cooking show and it's like a but it was like a real life thing and like it was a real life scandal it's like on it's like in japanese like little (laughs) tv magazines whatever but they bring it up on the show and then they like expose all of his text messages they like got a hold of him without him knowing and like just embarrass him in front of his like family they have his like parents come in and everything his ex-wife it's like hysterical (laughs) good lord but great show been watching that for fucking years now um it's a real bummer because um, COVID uh, basically ended it. Uh, so when that happened, they were like, they took a bunch of precautions to do one final um, season and everyone was like masked up and constantly, you know, sanitizing their hands. And again, it's like without getting into COVID shit, it's like obviously some countries took it ser- more seriously than others. And Japan was one that took it very seriously. And yeah. so they were just like, nope, we got to shut it down. Mm-hmm. Um, I had this show and I had Terrace House sort of... Terrace House, I know. Yeah, sort of battling for which one I'd want to put in. But again, Terrace House is not one that I've gone back and rewatched. I've rewatched every episode of this like multiple times. Okay. Um, just because they're, again, they're easy to watch. They're easy to just put on the background and kind of turn yeah. around every once in a while and watch it. Um, but Terrace House has a similar sort of like tragic ending where one of the girls on the show killed herself. So then they were just like, Japan was like, shut it down. Yeah. And it's amazing how Japan treats stuff like that, whereas, like, we would fucking capitalize on it. Yeah. 
we'd be like, oh man, like I hope another person kills himself next season because like look at all the viewers we got. Yeah. Jeez. Whereas like their their viewership like spiked. People were like, what is Terrace House? And they're looking it up because they found out about this like suicide, and then they were like, no, that that's unacceptable. That she was bullied by fans of the show. So they're yeah. like, fuck it. They're like, we basically caused this. Shut it down. No more. No more Terrace House. So mm-hmm. that's a bummer because that was a good show yeah. too. Um, next one, Gilmore Girls. Interesting. It's Gilmore Girls. I, I, mean, love, I, I love, love the Gilmore show. Girls. Watched it like phew, at this point, I don't know, like fucking 10 times. Oof, I've watched it like three maybe. Watched it with, watched it the first time I watched it by myself. Watched it with uh, girlfriend number two. Watched it with my mom. Uh, watch it by myself. Just again, it's like it goes in the rotation with like friends. How I mm-hmm. Met Your Mother, even like Big Bang Theory, I've seen multiple times, which I'm like not that big of a fan of. Yeah. Um, but Gilmore Girls, it's just it's again, it's comfort food, man. It's just sure. It's a great. It's it's witty. It's fast. It's funny, but it's like charming and. You know, it's got you got your little romance in there. You got your you know everybody's got an opinion on, on the boyfriends, which one's the best, right? Team Jess. I agree. <laughs> Jess is the best. Um, but she, you know, and then Lorelai is just she's so hot and just come she's on. the ideal woman. Yeah, just. Uh. And then the fucking the the relationship with the mother, with the grandma and grandpa. Yeah. And then him, you know, rest in peace. But. Just great performance, great characters, mm-hmm. and then all of it wrapped up in Stars Hollow. Stars Hollow just baby. the the dreamy, the like ideal it, place to live. It, like kind of like West Wing is the fantasy version of like politics. Yeah. This is like the fantasy version of like America, like yeah, small town America. Yeah, like suburb, like not even suburban, but like it it, it, it gives you that like desire to be like I want to move to like a small little town. And like in you know, go to local diner and and see you know Luke behind the counter or whatever doing his you know. Indeed. But in reality, it's like if you lived in a small little town, it'd be super fucking racist and it depends you know. on where you go. It very very weird. It people. wouldn't be like this. No, it's like it's either but. super racist. You find a little small town in the south, right? It's gonna be super racist. You find a small town up north or you know somewhere in the east coast. It's gonna be like a bunch of old people. Yeah. You know, it's just, it, it's not like, it's not this. It's not the no. fun, eclectic characters. No. You don't have, you know, Sean Gunn in there. No. Basically carrying the whole show on his shoulders. <laughs> it's a great, you know, great show. I agree. It is a good show. Yeah, I, I've described Amy Sherman Palladino as she's the female Aaron Sorkin. Yeah. Because the rapid fire reference banter mm-hmm. just like him yeah so but it's good it's a good heartwarming tale yeah i like um, the i like the mother-daughter like relationship yeah sometimes the choices rory makes are a little infuriating but yeah but they're infuriating because lorelei's infuriating yeah. she's she's like not she's not a perfect mother by any means yeah. she's she's uh i think the other reason i like it too is because like my my First girlfriend, her relationship with her mom was very similar. Mm. They were like more buddies, Almost. yeah, because she was so young. She was thirteen when she had her, yeah. so like they're they're like so close in age, yeah. kind of. When you you know when you kind yeah. of think about it, um, they would like they could like share each other's clothes and stuff. It's like it's bizarre, but they had that kind of relationship where it was like you know, without the dad in the picture you know, raise herself, you know, she liked the same shit that she likes, the same music, yeah. TV shows, all that stuff. Um, but flawed. Yeah. You know, it's like, you can't, I don't know. Yeah. Without getting into all the parenting. So I'm not a parent. So whatever, whatever. <laughs> I'm just going off the show. Sure. The show shows you that, you know, Lorelai doesn't have all the answers. No. She needed her grandma and grandpa. She needs her dad. She needs, you know, some guidance somewhere else because, Lorelai's kind of a fucking floofy. Yeah. She doesn't have her shit together either. Yeah. But great show. It is a good show. Very charming. Yeah, charming is the word. I agree. I even like the Netflix stuff, even though it's not as good. It's not as good, but still not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. It's got a great opening song, too. Oh, 
That song's yeah. great. Very good. It's like it's like every time you, when the song starts, you're just like, yeah, I'm I, I'm in the mood now for for yep. Gilmore Girls. I'm in the mood for whatever her little stupid academy was she went to in the first season. Sure. And those shitty little characters. Yeah. I'm trying to remember all the people that like came because again, it's like the Gilmore Girls had a lot of characters that come through and yeah, yeah, not as much as like Friends and yeah, yeah. Uh, How I Met Your Mother, basically Friends 2.0. Yeah. Um, but you know, great show. I like the I like the general idea of the show. The 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 that you know the through line that story, the mystery of it until we get it at the end. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I guess one of the few people who likes the ending. I mean, the ending is fine. I like it more that like when I've, I like it more every time I watch the show because I see all of the places throughout the show where like they are televising. That is how it's going to end. Yeah. And almost calling you the viewer like dumb for thinking that it's going to end with the mother. Yeah, because like there are so many hints that like it it's not a it, like this story is not really about that. Yeah, and it's obvious because like she's not in the story right until the very final until season. Very, she's very, yeah. barely in it. The kids make a mention of that. Yeah. They're like, "Mom's barely in the fucking story," and it's mostly about you and Aunt Robin and like the the craziness between you know you and her and and Barney and you know. Yeah, but again, great show, quotable. Just fun, you know, lighthearted. I like, I like my little lighthearted like comedy stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to turn on TV and. I guess, the, I guess the problem is like for me, like TV, watching TV has become like a nighttime thing, mm-hmm. where like I don't like come home from work and watch TV unless it's like a show that like someone's like hey you gotta watch this show whatever and it's like all right like i'll check it out then it's like i'll come home and start watching that show because like i have to pay attention yeah but like uh, normally it's like i'm playing a video game doing something else Mm -hmm. and then like i throw on a tv show to like basically like fall asleep to where i'm like i'll watch a couple episodes and then like i'll doze off in the middle of another one sure so like it's got to be something that like i i don't have to like pay close attention to or something that like i don't want to have to go back and like go back in my my thing and be like well what episode did i fall asleep at and yeah. where am i you know it's like i don't care i just start the next one so sitcoms are easy because it's just like fucking whatever yeah. every episode's got its own little story arc i can just start at any point definitely um but yeah i like the ending i like the i like the music throughout the show i like all the like little kind of indie bands and songs that mm-hmm. that i've been introduced to through this and sure um this was one that like I second girlfriend told me to watch as it was like airing and I had no clue that like Allison Hannigan and um what's his face? Jason Siegel, Neil Patrick Harris, that they were like in a TV show together and I was like, What are you talking about? And then I, I, I turned this on, and I'm like, When the fuck did this start? And it was like in the <laughs> early two thousands and mm-hmm. you know, I pay, I come into it like fucking five seasons in <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, it's it like after like forgetting Sarah Marshall and stuff had been out. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I knew Jason Siegel already. Mm-hmm. I knew Alice Anna from American Pie, Neil Patrick Harris from fucking. I didn't know him from um, Doogie, Doogie Hauser, Hauser, but yeah. I knew him from this like. Was, uh, I, what, what's the stupid uh, White Castle yeah, movie? Harold and Gilmore. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. This was like again a career renaissance for him. Yeah, because again he had Doogie Hauser when he was young. Then he went through a period where he wasn't really on TV or any stuff like that. He did theater and shit in New York, but and and Doogie Howser was always a it was always a joke. Like when yeah. he would be in other things, like yeah. even when he's in the White Castle movie, yeah. it's Doogie Howser jokes. Yeah, so it's like he never really escaped that until yeah. I mean, this. he was well. I mean, he did Starship Troopers, but it was so different. Yeah, and it didn't do well. And he dies so quickly. And, no, he survived in that one. Does he? Yeah, he was like the SS officer who like figures it all out at the end. He's like the mentalist. Oh, I thought he was like one of the first boyfriends that no. died. I'm thinking of the other guy. No. No, all I, was remember from that, all I remember from that movie is Denise Richards taking a shower. Well, yeah, sure. But <laughs> And the brain bug. Oh, well, yeah, of course. But yeah, so it was like a career renaissance for him. And again, it like shot him off. Now, of course, I already knew. 
Jason Siegel from Freaks and Geeks, baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Allison Hannigan, I knew already. From Buffy? From Buffy, even though I never watched Buffy, but I knew she was on it, and I knew her from American Pie. Yeah. So, But I did not know Josh Radner. No. Um, didn't know Kobe. I didn't know Kobe Smulders either, so. Yeah. So, yeah, that was my introduction to both of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good show. You know? I like it. I like it. Despite its, its you know, little problems towards the end, the last season being kind of a mess. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely being a product of, like, all of these people were moving on. Yeah, I was going to say, it was. it's almost the same thing as Game of Thrones. Yeah. And that, like, they knew how they wanted to end it. They just kind of, like, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Let's just rush through this and get it done yeah because we're all moving on we're ready bays and stuff we're like ready to go off and do other shit oh and then i mean and then even the actors i'm like you had yeah kobe smolders and marvel stuff you yeah. had i mean i don't know if no patrick harris was getting his like tv the series of unfortunate events and whatever shit he was moving on to jason siegel was kind of being an asshole because he thought he was like a big fucking star or whatever he became and, a movie star and... yeah but he wanted to like move on yeah. he's barely in the last season he's like yeah He's in that car ride with what's her face throughout like half the season, mm-hmm. until he shows up at the the little, little hotel that they're all yeah you know getting married whatever that wedding. Anyways, uh, good show despite the few yeah. problems it has. It is a good show. Um, Lost, we both had it. Yeah. Fantastic show. We've already good talked show. about it. Um, yeah, nothing else really to say about it. Okay. Uh, and then the final one. Is interesting. This is interesting. It's only got one season. Yeah. It's very new. Very new. But the reason I put it on the list is because I have rewatched it. I've watched it now three times. Okay. Um, and I think really why I put it on here was because it kind of like re sparked something in me that like got me to like go back and like really. Like, I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know if it was us doing the reactions. Maybe part of it is that. Maybe part of it is just, like, there weren't, like, very many good anime. Like, after, like, Attack on Titan, I kind of felt this, like, weird, like, lull where I'm, like, I'm looking for the next thing or whatever. But then this hits, and it's, like, here's a show that's, like, already got a ton. You can, like, jump in, and, and you'll be set. Yeah. And I'm, like, okay, that's great because... Now I can watch something and uh, never be, you know, I can't, I can't sit here and be like, I have nothing to watch. I get, one piece is there. I have a thousand episodes to watch. It's, it reminds me of, like, being a kid. It feels like Dragon Ball Z. Mm-hmm. Uh, it got me to, like, read manga again. It got me to, like, collect DVDs again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm, like, rebuying the, like, you know, or I'm buying the, the anime and watching it on DVD. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was just, like, it was a big... I don't know. Felt like a it felt like a like a re, like an anime like an actual like anime revival for me. Yeah, I can see that. And it's it's just it's so well done. The story is is classic. You know, yeah. found fan. We've talked about it when we yeah. talked about the show. But check out our reactions on the channel. Yeah, um, the characters are great. The actors are great. Yeah, everything was great. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I the world it is fun. And, yeah. It is. It's a fun world. And again, that's that's one of the things that we talked about with Down Abbey. Would you want to be in this world? Oh, I, uh, absolutely. That it would. It'd be so fun. Yeah, I agree. Only if I had like, only if I was as powerful as like his crew. Of course. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be like one of the shitty people that's just like at you know Baratier who gets like beaten to a pulp or whatever. <laughs> no, of course not. But yeah, I'd, I'd want to be a pirate. Yeah, I'd want to have a ship, a crew, yeah, and probably have eaten a double fruit. <laughs> yeah, have some sort of <laughs> some power. sort of power. Yeah, although I, it doesn't really matter. Like in the later episodes, yeah, I mean, you know, True. even Zoro, like he grows, he becomes stronger and stronger, and like Mihawk, like these these are yeah. no, you know, these don't characters don't have devil fruit powers, and they're fucking True. insane. That's true. So. But the show's, you know, watching, getting into the anime and the manga now, like, it's it's wild because it, like, it goes in directions, like, I, you know, you don't really see coming. And, like, the world changes. Okay. 
So like the worlds are not like the like or the islands that they go to and stuff mm-hmm. are like their own little like worlds. Mm-hmm. It's like the anime changes every time they there's a new arc. Mm-hmm. So it's like really interesting how it does that. I haven't gotten I still have not gotten to the point where there's like a apparently like a point in the anime where people are like when you get to this arc, this is when it becomes like you'll you'll either think this is the greatest show the greatest story ever told or like you won't be on board. Mm. So I'm waiting for that to hit. Okay. Cause that's what people say. The people are like people defend one piece. They're like, they're like, it's the best thing like ever written. Mm. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. You know, the Bible's up there. Well, sucker punch is up there right there. Anyway. Yeah. Sucker punch is fucking <laughs> fantastically written. <laughs> um, mm. But yeah, this is kind of my cheating way of putting the one piece anime on here. Hey, man, that's fine. I get it. But it's because this is actually what got me into it. And it was really good. It was good. It was fun. Really, really good. I agree. I agree. And I wanted something more, like, modern. I didn't want everything to be, like, from, you know, me being, like, a kid or a teenager watching it and being, you know. Sure. So I was like, all right, this this is later on in life. This was, but it, like, brought me back to feeling like a kid. And that's, you know. And I'm so excited for season two. Oh, yeah. I want to see how they do Chopper. Yeah. It's going to be weird. It's going to be I want to see, yeah, I want to see who they cast for certain characters. Because, like, knowing what they look like in the, these ones are pretty good mm-hmm. as far as, like, how they, they look in the in the anime and the manga. But, you know, there's some deviation, but sure, it, it works. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. But some of the other characters, I'm just like, ooh, I don't know how you're going to do that. Guess we'll see. It's got to be CG or probably yeah. I'm just and I'm, uh, I just hope it, it like as as it gets crazier it doesn't it doesn't get bad like visually because it's gonna be hard to pull off some of the stuff. Sure. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I have faith. They did so well in the first season that I give them a lot of latitude. Yeah. Um, I mean that first season was the most expensive fucking show ever made, so. Imagine how well number two is going to be. Yeah. I mean, it was already a hit, so got to up that budget. Mm-hmm. And we'll just see what happens. But, okay. That'd I'm also also excited for the new the new uh, anime, Studio, yeah. Studio Wit. True. Remaking. I'm interested. I will probably watch that. Yeah, because now that, like, starting from the beginning, but now understanding... That the pace can be completely changed, correct? And even if you're not following the manga like to a T, which some a lot of people are like, oh no, I think they're gonna follow the manga like strictly, um, which even that would be like the pace would be way quicker. But even then, you could like you can, you know, we could see from the, this that like you can pick up the pace, you can yeah. skip some stuff, you can tell it in a different order, and it'd be fine. Sure, you know, but like, but but starting now with how much content we have, like they could do a great job making a a more condensed. Yeah, better paced like version of the show. I agree. So it'll be exciting to yeah. see that. Yeah. But okay. anyways, that's my three by three. Good good list. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Alright, well those were our personal three by threes for T V. This one was this one was hard. The T V show stuff was hard for me. I I'm I as we talked about yeah, before. It wasn't hard for me except for that one slot. Yeah. I'm just, but I'm not a TV here's show the person. the other thing. People are going to look at mine. And they're going to be like, you basic motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You picked like the greatest shows. And I'm like, yeah, they're the best for a reason, dude. But I can tell you honestly, I have watched all of those multiple, multiple, multiple times. Because I am a huge fan. Not yeah. because I looked at a list and said, oh yeah, those are good. Those are the ones that I watch over and over again. Yeah, see, I'm 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 different. I love those shows. Yeah. I had, I mean, I had Game of Thrones. I had Mind Hunters. I had uh, Breaking Bad. You know, there's I, like I people see this and it's like, oh, he's never like watched a, a TV show. And it's like, no, I've seen good I shows. Watch stuff. I just for me, it's like you know, and then like some of them was like like some like Westworld and, and Game of Thrones. I'm like, they have great seasons, but yeah. like overall. Yeah. They're not great. Yeah. 
or like overall there's a problem or overall I just don't want to go back and rewatch them. Like there's, there was always something where I kind of like was yeah. moving things out, but. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, like there were a lot of them that I almost put on there. I almost put Rick and Morty on there. I almost yeah. put Futurama because I've watched them multiple times. I almost put Key and Peel on there. I had Key and Peel Because I've watched that multiple times. Yep. Um, Another one that I almost had on there, but I haven't watched it as often, but I loved it, was Flight of the Concords. Mm. I love that show. Yeah. But I just didn't feel like it was strong enough for me to say it's one of my favorites. Yeah. I, I mean, I had um, I had Spaced. Yeah. Um, and then, like, I had all the cartoon stuff. I had Family Guy. I had The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. I had South Park, Futurama, Rick and Morty. I even had like I mean I had Big Bang Theory because I've seen it multiple times now. I had some like stuff like that, but it's just like eh, like the one that's not on here for you that I expected mm-hmm. was Fringe. So we had a discussion about this after the movie yeah. uh, last night when we were kind yeah. of talking, and I was like, w- the reason this became difficult for me was because I told you that there were some shows that I've gone back and I've rewatched and. During rewatch was like, this is not that good. Mm. Fringe was one of those. Okay, I was watching Fringe uh, like last month. I like started it again mm. from the beginning, and uh, and like the first like half of season one is like pretty good, yeah. and then like as it kind of kept going, I was like, oh yeah, and I was like, and then so then I started remembering future seasons and future stuff that they were doing, and I was like, oh man, I was like, I forgot how like how dumb the show gets and like how how just like you know like off the rails it goes and then like the final season being a complete fucking mess because like <coughs> they canceled the show yeah but they were like we'll give you one last yeah. season <laughs> but they go into the future mm-hmm. they like freeze themselves in amber and then go into the and i'm like oh yeah that's right and they meet her like his daughter yeah their daughter and then yeah. she's like part of like the resistance group and i yeah. was like oh i hated that okay. so there was a lot of things that came back to me and i was just like i was like okay if i'm being honest with myself i can't put fringe on here because i kind of i kind of don't like the rewatch okay yeah and, and it, it fell yeah and i was just like man it was a bummer because i'm like that was like my x files i know but yeah then I tried to kind of think about some more like more like modern shows like some of the newer ones we watched but then i was like I don't know because like like I've only seen like one season or like that one season is not like enough yet to like make a yeah, decision. That was, that's why I mostly went with like completed stuff and stuff that's generally a little older. Yeah. Was because I knew you know it's been time tested at this point and and it and again it passes my I watch it over and over again thing so. Yeah. I went with the ones that are just, I mean, there's a reason they're on a lot of lists. Yeah. Because they're just good. Um, yeah. I mean, I even thought, like, I, I told you, I thought about Friends just because I have seen it so many times. I mean, I watched it myself. I watched it live when it was on. I watched it myself in reruns. Anytime it was on, I'd usually be watching it. As, like, we would go... There are a lot of years with Leanne where, you know, we get into a habit. Oh, yeah. And the habit is, you know, you come home, you decompress from work, you like change out of your work clothes, you sit on the couch before dinner, and you turn on, usually this was when cable was a thing, and you would just turn it on and whatever reruns are on, that's what you're watching. So usually it was King of Queens, it was Everybody Loves Raymond, it was Friends, it was Seinfeld, you know, stuff that was just always on every day at a particular time. Yeah. Um, so I've watched, like, all of those a lot. I've watched Frasier. I used to watch that in syndication when I was young. I mean, beyond when I watched I it was on. I used to watch on. Will and Grace. I watched Will and Grace a few times. I almost put ER on there hmm. because I watched ER all 15 seasons of ER. Jeez. I watched as it was on. But... Other than like the first season or two, I've never revisited it. So I was like, so I can't really, yeah. you know, I may appreciate it and like it, but obviously it's not one of my favorites because I never rewatched it. 
and it's available. You can find it. I mean, I went, I went kind of like I went off to the side even where I had on the list because I, I just put on the list on the long list and then you know, immediately removed it. But I had um, reality TV. I had Jersey Shore. <laughs> I had Master Chef, Kitchen Nightmares, mm-hmm. Hell's Kitchen. Because like all the Gordon Ramsay stuff was a big thing for a, like a while. Yeah. I had Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives almost in the final. Oh my God. Because I was just like... I mean, I've watched it I've so watched many times. So much House Hunters? It. You know how many House oh Hunters God. I've watched? <laughs> Jesus Christ. We used to like... But take... I decided I had to go... For me, it had to be scripted. That's, that's inevitably what I decided was like... I was like, well, reality TV is not fair because right. it's like... It's it's not really the purpose of like this exercise. It's yeah. like I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to explain. But that, yeah, I, I kind of have the same feeling where I was like, eh, I don't feel like reality TV fits. And when I was thinking about it, and I was like, God, if we're talking about the things I've probably watched the most in my life, I might have to put GI Joe on there. <sighs> you know how many yeah. times I watched that as a kid? Saved by the Bell. How many times I watched Saved by the Bell when I was younger? Every day when I got home from school. Yeah. It was two episodes of Saved by the Bell every fucking day. Yeah, I was like, I used to watch Dexter's Lab, mm. Hey Arnold, Doug. Yeah. I was like, I had all these cartoons on there, but then I was like, but none of those cartoons, like, I didn't love those cartoons. Yeah. I didn't, like, go out and, like, seek them or buy them on DVD, exactly. on Blu-ray, whatever, like, and then, like, re- like you know, reruns were reruns. I watched them because I had to, because I was waiting for something else to come yeah. on or... You know, whatever, but yeah. yeah, I never really, I never sought them out. Yeah, yeah. Ultimately, I was like, nah, I gotta go with the stuff that I choose to watch again and again, and that I love, and that I would recommend to people. Yeah, so that's all I got. I had Stranger Things on here for like a, a minute. I thought about it. I thought about Stranger Things too, and I was like, eh. I haven't gone back and rewatched it though, and it's still airing. Yeah, and it's I'm, still airing. I don't know how it's gonna end, and so I'm kind of like up in the air on like, yeah how i feel about it yeah yeah we'll see but i'm i'm pretty good with my list yeah it, it probably yeah it probably summarizes me and my taste more than just about anything i feel like mine definitely does yeah i agree some random what the fuck shit in there and then yeah yeah the rest is all comedies and lighthearted shit all right uh so those were our three by threes for tv in the comments let us know yours let us know your favorite shows yeah yeah we'd like to hear let us know how you came up with your three by three what were your yeah, criteria what was, what was important to you yeah. what drove your decision <sighs> all right another video in the books nice um again check us out on patreon patreon.com slash blake and jeff link in the description um and we'll see you in the next one bye <laughs>